common narrative in our culture today is that there's conflict between science and the Christian faith. Many people are under the perception that the latest advances in science make belief in God untenable and render the creation accounts found in scripture unbelievable. But is that really the case? I'm joined today by Dr. Darren Williams who will help unpack that question. Dr. Williams has a PhD in physical chemistry. He is a professor at a university he's taught for over 20 years. He's also a Christian. Darren, one of the things that the Bible teaches us is that God has revealed himself to us through the record of nature. Uh, this is sometimes called general revelation, right. as you well know. Uh, as a Christian and as a scientist, do you see evidence for God's fingerprints in creation? Yes, I think it's been fascinating, this whole concept that that there's the book of nature and the, and the book of scripture and that they are in harmony. And as a scientist, I can dive in as deep as I want to in the book of nature. One of the things that has struck me the most is the advances in DNA. It really is, it's an elaborate programming code that turns sequences of just four molecules. I mean, that seems to me to be amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed already that the periodic table only has what, 118 elements, <laughs> less than that, but they're aiming for that 118, and you can build the whole universe. That's, that's amazing to me. But the DNA code is even more amazing, that, that four bases in different sequences can produce everything from an amoeba to a plant to you and I, who have now the capabilities to produce all of the other things that we see through our creativity. That is a software code that it didn't just develop with existing hardware. The hardware was also created with the code. And to think that that happened randomly, that the code and the hardware mutually built each other, it just doesn't hold water with me at all. You know, this is saying a lot because you've got a lot of experience in programming. As yes. a physical chemist, you do a lot with computer systems as part of your research. Is that right? Yes, yes and computational chemistry, uh, writing my own software, and, and, and really in small cases, but I know that software doesn't write itself. And I know that uh, if you've ever programmed in any of these programs, languages that has a semicolon at the end, you forget one semicolon and the program won't work. It's just that sensitive. And to see DNA that has error correcting algorithms, I mean, recently the Nobel Prize was was shared by folks who had discovered the error detection mechanism, the error correction mechanism. Correcting errors is a teleological thing. That means there's an error that's going to lead to a different outcome than the purposed outcome. That's, that's not random. <laughs> well, you know, and one of the things that, that fascinates me as a biochemist along these lines and you're getting to at this a little bit with the idea of error correction capabilities yes. in the code. But when you look at the biochemical operations in the cell, there's these highly elaborate quality control systems yes. in place. And I had, you know, as a prior to joining Reasons to Believe, I worked in industry and I got a chance to interface with engineers and work with plants that were producing the products that we were developing. Mm -hmm. And to develop high quality control, or to develop sophisticated quality control systems is in and of itself an engineering marvel. Right. And to see that in the cell to me is, is, is astounding. And to sit there and say, well, survival is what caused this to, to be optimized and retained okay, that, that's, that's the comeback to say, you know, these error correcting uh, mechanisms allowed survival of that particular species. But the hardware, the software, the error correcting code, all of that, if you were to try to do that randomly and select it, there's just simply not enough time. Even if you have four and a half billion years, uh, bacteria were, what, 3.6, 3.7 billion mm -hmm. years, they go back that far. That's so now we've pushed this from chemical evolution to functional bacteria to a very small window if you're going to try to do this one step at a time yeah. through random change. Is there anything else in nature that also strikes you as evidence for a creator's fingerprints? I think it's, I think the evidence, I'd like to unpack that a little bit more to say that 
there's two types. I teach forensic chemistry as well at mm -hmm. the university. And there's two types of evidence. There's direct evidence, which would be just personal testimony. You know, someone saw a crime and they said, this is the person that did it. I was there. I saw them. Everything else is indirect evidence. And indirect evidence requires some level of inference. And so when you say evidence, I'm thinking, is it consistent with the Christian faith or not? Those are the terms that we use in forensics. Is this consistent with the existence of a creator or the existence of a random universe? And the fine tuning is not consistent with a random shake of the Legos and you open it up and it's, it's a completely built model. But it is very consistent with a creator who had all of these things in mind and was able to set them up just right.